Welcome back. This is part three of building a G5RV uh, multi-band antenna that I'm going to use on my <coughs> ham radio. And uh, in the last segment, which was uh, 9A, video uh, number 9A, uh, I said I was having a little trouble coming up at RG58. Well, I just I guess I just didn't look in the right spot. Uh, I went to Lowe's, and they had RG6. Uh, I didn't want RG6, I wanted RG58. So I wound up at uh, Radio Shack where I found 50 foot piece and a 20 foot piece. They come in 50 and 20 foot uh, lengths and this was the last 50 foot piece he had. So I was kind of lucky. I think this will do me for getting the, uh, the antenna into the house and hooked up to my uh, what will eventually be my antenna tuner that I'm going to buy. I like this in particular because it already has PL259 connectors on the end. PL259, that's what these are called, both of them. I thought I was going to have to buy new ones and uh, put them on and uh, take time and trouble at about 4 or $5 a pop plus tax. I, I really wasn't looking forward to that, but if I had to do it, I was going to have to do it. Well, these are already on there, so I'm pretty happy. Uh, I also bought uh, what's called a PL258. I believe that's what that's called and what this is is a junction and uh, it goes on the end of the uh, it, it joins two of these cables together so all it is is just a couple a coupler and uh, so I needed one of those I picked up one of those and I also picked up what's called an SO239 an SO239 the SO239 is the terminal point uh, I will use it as a terminal point on my HW101. Currently, the HW101 transceiver I have has a uh, connection on the back. For the antenna, that's an RCA connector. Nah, that's got to go. Got to go. Uh, not only did a fellow who rebuilt these things on the internet say that he changed his to a SO239, uh, I believe that's what it was. I'll find out later on. I may have to go down and even get a different one. Uh, this is the one I think I needed. And someone else told me uh, in the uh, Amateur Radio Club, Faulkner County Amateur Radio Club, that that's what I needed. This will go into the radio, the back of the radio, and take the place of the RCA connector that I will remove. Uh, this one here, I bought a second one. And uh, when the flat wire comes down from the antenna trees, it's going to be strung between this great big old tall tree you see right here. It's uh, quite a ways out, but it's going to be strung... From around the top of that baby, I'm going to string it all the way across the backyard. And here's another tree right here. And that's a big old tall baby there. I'm going to get those, get that sucker up on both places. The center of the antenna will be between these two trees. Probably somewhere over in this area here. So we'll cover that when the time comes, of course. But that twin lead TV uh, flat cable will come down and it will need to connect to something. Uh, and it will connect to uh, this right here. Now, I'll have this mounted on a piece of plastic. I'll solder it up to the back. And then the other end will be able to be picked up by the uh, PL259 on the end of the coax cable. And then I can just start running my coax cable from there. So I'll be uh, cutting this, uh, this old cutting board up a little bit more, it looks like. And uh, that's, what's gonna, that's what I'm going to use to mount this uh, OS239 so I can get this cable hooked up. Okay, I'll be hoisting this thing up into the trees with plastic clothesline. Uh, we have some plastic clothesline out back here that's been there for years and years. And it's, I went out there the other day, man, I'll tell you what, you still can't break that stuff. That is really strong. So I said, that's for me. I got a couple of hundred foot rolls, you know, a little bit of overkill. Overkill is good for the sole once in a while. It says it's sag resistant, sunlight resistant, moisture resistant, and it wipes clean. And, uh, you know, what more could a fella ask for? So there's where we stand right now. I have to do a little bit of work, but I'm, the first thing I'm going to do is look in the back of my uh, HW101 Heathkit transceiver and make sure that this is what I need. Okay, here's the uh, antenna connection on the back of the uh, HW101 uh, Heathkit transceiver. And as you can see, it's an RCA connector. Now that thing is going to have to go. I don't know if you can see that very well. I can't get really that close with this camera because it'll turn blurry. But that's the back of the connector right there. And there's two wires that are soldered to it. One of them is on the left here, and that's the ground. And the other one is the center tab. 
which is where the center of the coax cable will connect. And uh, when I put in that SO239, this will solder to the back of the center, and this will have a terminal placed on it, this wire right here, and the uh, wire will go underneath the screw and lock washer and flat washer that holds the SO239 into the chassis. Here's how I've decided to handle the connection between the flat wire coming down out of the tree and the coax cable that's going to ultimately lead into the uh, antenna tuner in the house. Uh, there has to be a connection between the two. Uh, I have a piece of plastic here I cut off of that uh, cutting board quite a while ago. And it's just sort of been laying around my workbench. I don't know what I was planning to do with it, but I'm glad it's there. It turns out to be just about the size I need. I'm going to have a. Uh, I'm going to take this thing to work today. I'm going to smooth up the edge on the sanding machine, make it look a little more uh, less sharp along there, a little easier to work with. A bunch of plastic uh, has come up as a result of the cutting. I want to kind of smooth it off a little bit. Once the 5 8 inch hole is cut, I'll take this connector and I'll stick it down through the 5 8 inch hole so this part here comes out the other side. And it will look like this once it's there. Now I will solder one side of the flat wire to the center connector on this. And the other side, I'll put a, I'll put a uh, terminal on it and I'll put it underneath the flat washer, lock washer and nut that comes through the piece of plastic to secure this uh, connector onto, the, onto this. And uh, I need some sort of strain release, not, uh, relief. I, I could just bring the plastic, I mean, bring the flat wire up, you know, along the back like that, and then solder it up, and then wrap tape around, around, around. And, you know, I just I don't know about that idea. What I've decided to do is uh, cut two slots here and here, and then I'll bring the flat wire. It'll come down out of the tree. The flat wire will go through the bottom here and come up through the top. It'll run across here and then back down through this hole and back out the other side and then I'll sort of bend it over to where it can be soldered. Then I'll go ahead and wrap my tape around it and those two, those two slots with that uh, space of plastic in between should give me a real good strain relief once it's taped up. Sort of a double relief I guess. Wish me luck folks! Well here it is folks. The flat uh, lead has been fed up through the plastic and down through the other side and as I said uh, one side of the uh, Flat wire is connected to the to the uh, center post right here, and uh, the other side is had a connect uh, a, a terminal connector uh, soldered to the end of it, placed underneath the flat washer, and then of course the lock washer nut went on over the top, and uh, this is going to work real good. Uh, I probably should have made the tail end of this thing a lot longer, maybe about out to here. That way I wouldn't have had to have such severe bends, but it'll work. You know, it'll work. And uh, if it doesn't, well, later on I can just change it. Not a big deal. And uh, now what I'm going to do is take, uh, I don't have very much electrical tape left, but I'm going to electrically uh, uh, tape it up to about this point right here. And uh, after I get it up into the tree and I get the coax connector uh, and cable hooked to it, and Glenn King comes out and uh, we do our little SWR thing with his antenna analyzer, and he says everything is good to go. And then I'll go ahead and tape up the rest of this section here and uh, afterwards coat the entire thing with uh, liquid tape uh, like I did before. So let's put a little tape on there and see how it turns out. And here it is, <clears throat> all taped up. Uh, the tape is for weatherproofing and in this case it will double as a, uh, uh, a mechanism to hold the strain relief. Uh, in place a little bit, even though I doubt that the strain relief needs it. Now, you can't hardly move that thing once once I threaded it up and down the other side. It it formed its own strain relief automatically. Okay, next time uh, <clears throat> I hope to have this thing up into the tree. I don't know how long it's going to be. The wife's got some uh, honeydews for me to do around the house. She claims I haven't been doing my share, not pulling my oar on the boat, and the boat's going in circles. Well, I have a tendency to disagree with that, but until next time, uh, hopefully, like I said, I'll have it up in the, have it up in the, well, may, maybe I'll, maybe I'll actually film part of it uh, going up into the tree. I don't want to just show it to you up in the tree. That would be kind of cheating you a little bit. So until next time, this is John.